Hello, welcome back to my channel. So you can see my pretty makeup, but also my workspace. I'm working on the big flan. Um, today it's already finished, but there I'm showing you a bit of my process. It's on some wallpaper that I bought, so it's cheaper than buying some big, um, you know, big paper especially for oil paints but I think there are some risks when using wallpaper it um, can like disintegrate yeah I think that's about right so yeah I'm setting it all up It's all about it's all about finding the right colors mixing them getting the values right getting the lights where they should be the depths and the strengths of the different colors I do like to let the um, marker shine through. Um, a lot of people always wonder if that's on purpose, but yes, if I didn't want the marker to shine through, I wouldn't use such a strong and bold color like black or red. Obviously, it's there so you can see it. Yeah. It's a um, stylistic choice uh, to mix, yeah, to let it shine through. Nothing has to be perfect, you just have to be happy. A lot of people tell me it's quite calming to watch somebody paint, so sometimes I wonder if I should make a time lapse, but I'm not sure. I think maybe that's not enough, um, not enough entertainment, but please let me know what you like to watch.
Yes, so here I'm working on paper, so I did break down a book I found. Um, yes, I wanted to make some paper, my own paper, to do prints on them. Um, the prints that are from the, the copper engraving that you saw in last video. Yes, so here I'm showing you the process. So basically I'm cutting up the papers to break them down with hot water. Um, let them get soft and soggy. To then mix them and... Yes, well I try to bleach them a little with bleach and like uh, laundry detergents and those kind of products. I basically used anything I found. Um, yes, it, it's quite a process. It was the first time making it. Um, the old book didn't smell great. That's why I also put some um, fabric softener in and it did help. So I'm quite impressed by that. Yeah. All the ink of the pages did make the pulp quite grayish even um, yeah when I added the product it turned more into a greenish gray I don't know I wasn't a big fan of that but um, it was already quite an effort so I just kept going I also strained the pulp a few times with an old stocking it worked nice, but it's a bit dangerous working with such a hot liquid and then straining it yourself. Yeah, I was really putting any products in there. Uh, the thing that I forgot to use was a bit of glue. Um, the teacher told me later on that uh, the glue would have helped the paper to stay together because to print on paper with the engraving you gotta wet the paper again to let the ink really get into it and I didn't use the glue so if you put the paper back into water it would just disintegrate once again yeah so here I'm also pulling an old um, stocking over a frame I made uh, to make the mesh to to pull out the paper and make those pages. Well, the thing that worked didn't work out so well is the mesh was a really thin material, so uh, the water was getting out really slowly. I think this was all a struggle. I think this might be a good example of what not to do to do paper. Get yourself a good mesh like a Mostico. Uh, Mostico mesh, yeah, anything that is not too tight because if the paper, if you have to wait for the water to get out, yeah, as long as I did, you're gonna have your arms hurting, it's gonna be frustrating, it's not gonna be fun, yeah. So, in the big basin, I put my pulp in. I think that's how you do it. It was quite um, pulpy and not really getting mixed, but if you wait a bit, it will get quite homogenic. Yes, so you can see the weight of the water really pulling through and the water not really getting out. This was my very first try and it is not pretty. It's, it's messy. It's quite messy and um, I don't know. I don't know if I will do it again. If I do, I will not use a tight. I don't know. If you know any better ways, please let me know. Yes, 
Yeah, you can see um, it's quite floppy. It did work. But then the next issue comes to us. Um, well, you gotta like separate the paper from the screen and it was really hard. I saw videos where they use like a sponge, but even like that, there's not enough water passing through the tide. Uh, it's really not the way to do it, but I decided to do it and I pulled through, which is good. Yeah, so I mean, I I later on started playing with glitters and confetti to mix into the mixture. Um, yes, I mean, it's all very fragile, so really use some glue because that really would be pulling it all together, which I wasn't, obviously. Oh wow, you can see it really sticks to the screen, not to the floor, gravity wasn't working, but well, I did it, it is what it is. Also, um, it takes quite a long while to dry, I think it took me like three or four days. It was a long, long process. But I mean, it's quite worth it. I mean, the teacher was happy that I did some paper of my own to print on. The glitters and the confetti really made the, the whole thing look great. I mean, it's something you gotta do at least once. And then you can decide if you do it again, if you do it better than me. and. Um, I mean, it's a learning experience anyways. Maybe don't do it on a, on a Wednesday afternoon late at 7 p.m. Yeah, that's, that's the thing I gotta recommend. But yeah, so next video we'll have more food, I think. Yeah, until then, bye.